Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Vern from Usawa Fitness and I'm back with another video. Today we're doing a little bit different. As you may know, I'm a personal trainer and a coach. So a lot of times I'm trying to coach my clients through some things as they continue on a fitness journey. But it's more than fitness a lot of times, okay? So today I want to talk about using your strengths, trusting your strengths, not your fears. Because a lot of times what holds people back from achieving the goal that they're looking for is fear. And it's common. And I'm, I'm just as uh, guilty of that as anybody else. And I'm kind of going to go deep into that in my background and hopes that maybe some of you guys will be motivated to overcome some of your fears and actually learn to trust your strength opposed to your fears, which a lot of us do. So um, I'm just going to take it all the way back, y'all. So this is going to be a long one. So if you want to, you know, sit back, grab a cup of coffee or whatever and join along, then do that. And uh, if you want to just listen to this in parts, you can. I'll try to keep it as quick as I can, but I don't know if I could do that in a short version. So I'm just going to try to let it ride. <laughs> so growing up, I was... I was um, lucky enough to grow up in a place where you know i had a very diverse community and it was full of athletes all right full of athletes so many athletes and uh all we did all day was get out of school and, and uh and then start playing something and um a lot of a lot of my friends were you know uh better than me growing up i was in a bad i was a good athlete actually but I had athletes that were better, you know. My buddy Kyle wound up playing in uh, minor league baseball, um, drafted by a couple of times, drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates, and then he didn't go that year, and then drafted by the Mets. My boy Ryan, um, he wound up playing in the NFL, uh, drafted by the New York Jets, played there, and then also with the uh, Baltimore Ravens. And you know we was all really good, good athletes, and had a lot of fun playing. And but as I was, when I was little, I just kind of felt like, um, you know, I felt very confident as an athlete, but less confident as a student. Uh, I used to be. There was a teacher in the fifth grade, Mrs. Wrightis. I had her for the fourth and fifth grade. I was a troublesome kid. I just liked. I was a good student but I like to clown around. And in the fifth grade, I had this teacher for the fourth grade. In the fifth grade, she tried to send me to a thing called speed and this special education saying that, you know, maybe I wasn't, you know, I was such a bad kid that maybe I wasn't smart as other kids. And I think this is where it all started. So I started thinking maybe I wasn't smart. They, they, so once they took me through a bunch of tests and they started talking to a lot of my other teachers, they're like, oh, no, he's brilliant, actually. He just kind of like, you know, he just, he just a clown, you know. And I don't think she can handle that. But in my brain, I started to think that I wasn't as smart as my friends. Because I did get a lot of unsatisfactories, but those were always behavioral things. And so it wasn't until I got to college where I started realizing that I was I was pretty smart. Right? You know, sometimes I, I remember I had uh, this one science teacher. It wasn't Mr. Roden. I can't think of what his name was. It, it, and uh, he would ask us, he'd be like, all right, raise your hand and answer these questions. And I would I would be really one of those kids that I wanted to answer the question. And I remember him like being like, that's it. You know, pointing at me, that's it, Vernon. You got the answer. And I just felt so proud. But I was always fearful thinking that maybe I wasn't as smart as other people. And I built that computer you see behind me. I built several computers. I'm actually a pretty smart dude, all right? <laughs> um, but I still have problems trusting my strengths over my fears. And to this day, there's occasions where I feel like I'm still struggling with this. And um, this author and friend, Colleen Bordeaux, kind of pushed me to start getting over that because uh, she's brilliant and um, she's really been helping me to focus on becoming the true me. 
that was part of the hurdle that I had when I answered just before I answered YouTube. Right before I entered YouTube as a personal trainer, I was looking for ways to expand because I couldn't really personal train enough people to make the income that I needed to make to support me and my family. So I needed to start reaching more people at one time. And she was saying, hey, maybe you should start doing these, um, you know, lectures for a group of clients, right? And she was like, yeah, I'll rent the room for you. She went as far as to be like, I'll rent the room for you and we'll get a people, we'll have people come in and you could talk to them because she's, a lot of people say that not only am I, you know, a good, a good trainer, but even more than that, I'm a great um, motivator and, and very inspiring. I don't feel it. I don't see it. It's just me being real, talking to people. I do really well one-on-one. -on -one. And people just kind of enjoy that. And I think that's why my personal training business is as successful as it is. And that's kind of why I kind of want to do more of this because I don't know if it's there or not. But if it's there, I want you guys to be able to get it because people say it's there, right? People say that that's what I am. And I just want to be able to reach people, more people because I have this platform. But so she was like, I'm going to rent this room for you. And that the thought of getting up in front of a bunch of people and talking the way I talk one-on-one -on -one during personal training sessions seems so difficult for me. And I would, I kept putting it off, playing it off, put it off, playing it off. And I just wasn't getting it done. And then the pandemic hit and I, I, and it all changed. But just to go back on that, I remember in high school when I was in a uh, senior in high school and I remember like I'm playing all of these sports and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on the homecoming court, uh, uh, prom court. I might have been on both. I can't remember, but um, I, I just, I wasn't. I was a popular guy. I was really fun to be around, and people thought I was so confident. And one day I was doing a speech, and I finished the speech. I went up front. I finished the speech, and I came down. And my girl at the time, Jolie. She was like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, what you mean? She was like, I never saw you like that. And, you know, she had this look on her face. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, I did a good job, right? And she was like, yeah, the paper was shaking. She was like, your hands were shaking the whole time. And I didn't realize it. I was so embarrassed. And I'm like, man, you know, I was just always afraid of speaking in front of a lot of people even though I seem like this super confident dude, you know? And that girl, you know, just to go again, I'm gonna go off track for one second and I'm gonna get back. I know exactly where I wanna leave off, talking about right after, the right when the pandemic hit. But I screwed up with her, show you how long it is. That was my first girlfriend, dated her in the sixth grade, right? I love her more than anything else in the world. and years you know i weren't turned about 40 or so and you know we we dated on and off and then you know we were talking about getting married and i let my fear overtake my um you know my strengths in that instance because i know she she loved me for who i was and really appreciated me and she would have married me no matter what you know but she was more successful than i was and I got scared and man, I ghosted that girl and the one girl that I love more than anything else in the world. I mean, really like I, I just, I didn't know how to handle it. And I let my fear just totally screw up that relationship that I had since I was 10 years old. And I did that at like 40 years old. And it's one of the m most, it's uh it's probably my toughest thing that I've ever dealt with in my mind that I'm just knowing that I did that. And I just, I, I still haven't done anything to fix that. And I need to, you know, reach out to her. But I feel like at this point, I guess I'm still scared, you know, and, and I'm being honest with you guys because I just want to do a real video where it's not just me, you seeing me when I'm strong and that I can lift weights and I can, you know, motivate people. I just want you to see that there's always different sides to people. Cause I know when people are struggling and they're going through issues, 
that they it's good to know that everybody is going through the same things, all right? There's no new way of living. We all have fears. We all have problems. We all have success. And I want to share some of mine with you guys and hopes that maybe you can get better in life and, you know, I can get better through being open with you guys and letting you see more than just the dudes you see on the Usawa Fitness Garage and Review channel. But getting, you know, getting back to it, just talking about another place where I'm just really starting to feel like I'm getting to the next level of my life and learning to get over my fears and trust in my strengths. So when the pandemic hit, I started have I had to kind of like start doing videos because I needed to make income. But when I couldn't make it as a personal trainer, it's because the gym was closed. And the first live stream I did was a catastrophe because I clammed up, all right? And when I say, say I clammed up, I turned into somebody that I didn't love being. And what that was is this person that was not the real me. Now, when I started working at the first company that I worked in out of college, it was called Optimus. And it was a, um, it is a, post-production company they edit national commercials big time commercials um nike they could be doing like um you know gatorade they, just the real highest level commercials and um i was this it was only like four black people there i was one of them at the time your boy had the, the long this is the 1995 all right i had the dread not the dress but the um corn rolls and everything like alan iverson and them and, you know, I'm a strong, muscular dude and everything. And I know a lot of people were afraid of me because it's like, you know, it, it, it's only a couple of black people in there. And I was a real one. All right. You know, when I say I was a real one, I, I, I was able to, you know, I did some code switching. All right. I'm going to be real with that. But you could see that I was, the, you know, I, you could kind of feel that I was more urban than the other black people that worked there, aside from Elaine Frazier, my girl who was at the front desk. Um, you know, she used to come in, you could tell where she was from and I love that. But I was working direct with a lot of clients and that caused me to like kind of like not be the real me. And I would be in there, you know, just a lot of times, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, Vern Coach, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, you ain't going to see me on this platform, you know, using ain't and all of that, where I didn't do that there because at the time I just wasn't comfortable with that. But it's who I am, even though I was on fire at that company, okay? I could, you know, I might not have been the best at one thing, but I could work every room. Right. I go in there and I work as a as a color assistant. I worked as a graphic assistant. I worked as a um, I didn't do audio. I worked as an online assistant, offline assistant, cutting laser disc at the time. So it was like they could put me in any room and I could fill in on the, any day where a lot of, of assistants couldn't do that. I was a jack of all trades. And that was something that was you know, was cool. And it was something that they rewarded me with, with these little incremental raises, but, uh, never editor, you know? And, um, I saw people come in like, and they were just like, I need to be an editor. Now I started at that company as a, uh, I started in the shipping department. Then I went to the library. Then I became an assistant and then I became an online assistant. Then I became the um, senior assistant where I trained all the assistants and um, assistant editors. And so, you know, but it was like I wasn't the real me. And I felt like I, I didn't really reach my plateau for, for that. And I think those guys loved me and they were willing to give me, and they are my best friends. I got some real genuine friends from that company that I love and respect. But I think that I, if I would have been somewhere else, I might have gotten higher than I got at that company. And um, and I just think it was part of it is just because I didn't allow myself to be the real me. I think the real me would have said I would have been a lot more vocal. I would have been a lot more upfront with what I felt like I deserved and what I needed. And I think 
that they probably would have given it to me out of, you know, because those guys, they always gave me little raises. And I just think that I wasn't as, uh, I just didn't push as hard as some other people that I saw that were, you know, that, that weren't me. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I was afraid. I was afraid to, you know, reach out and stand up for myself. So when I started doing my first live stream, I turned back into the guy that I was when I was doing, when I was working at Optimus and I was just so afraid to just be the real me, even though I had had eight years of experience at the Oprah Winfrey channel, Oprah Winfrey uh, show where I was a lot more like me. But I, I, when I got in this camera situation, I got scared because I knew I was, I was talking to you guys and you guys were a much bigger audience. And um, so that didn't go so great. But as time went on, I started learning. I never posted that, that, that live stream, by the way. But as time went on, I started becoming the real me. And I started becoming more comfortable trusting in my strengths as a person. Meaning, hey, yeah, I have some experience. I'm a, I have experience as an editor. So I can edit videos that people can enjoy. I'm also comfortable doing that. Guess what? I could talk one-on-one -on -one with people and they can hear me, love me, respect me, and hate me all at the same time and enjoy my content. And this platform has been easy for me because when I'm speaking into a piece of glass, it's like speaking to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, all right? And I, I, I just feel like I'm talking to one person and I do really well like that. When I start talking in front of a lot of people, it's a little bit different, but I'm learning to trust the strengths that I have, which is I believe in being a good person. I believe in trying to be a light. I want to be a coach. I want to be a beacon for a healthy living. And, the, the, you know, being this type of person is easy for me if I allow myself to do that. And I just got to really focus on learning how to trust my strengths. Now, I'm going to talk about a few things that I looked up for you guys and where you see fear being an issue, okay? I was in looking at psychology today, and this one is what I really liked. It says on number four, fear constricts rather than expands who we are, Right? And so when you fear, you know, you reach, you start going into this little box of comfortability because fear has scared you into only operating from here. Where when we're not working with fear and we're able to poke that chest out, get strong and be who we really are, people are able to see that there's a lot to be gained from the relationships that we may have that are being constricted through this person's fear. I'm not over it. Just the other day, we had a block party. I've been living on my same block for 15 years. I train people on this block, a lot of people on this block. But for me to go out and to the block party, I ain't go. All right, I'm gonna be real. I didn't go because I thought of, you know, the fear of me having to get in front of a bunch of people or be around a bunch of people. And I'm a personal trainer. I talk about that. I'm a content creator. I talk about that. And, I, and I've been living by myself for, you know, for my whole life, right? You know, I got kids, but I've never been married and stuff like that. So I, my kids here, you know, they're in my life, totally in my life. But I haven't, they don't live with me. So I've been living by myself for a long time. I, I start thinking like to myself, oh man, all I'm going to be able to talk about is personal training and me doing content and that's going to get boring. And then people are going to wonder what else I could talk about. And I'm going to be uncomfortable thinking about that. So guess what? I'm not going to go. And afterwards, I, I, this happened year after year. I'm always disappointed. But it's what it is, you know, and um, I'm still learning. I'm trying to get stronger, kind of strengthen myself and become a better and bigger and, and more confident guy. Now, when I'm out there one on one, like, you know, I'm not like I could I, I walk down the block. Everybody on this block knows me and the other block. They call me the mayor because one on one. I see somebody and they walking down the street and they, they little kid is running. I'm like, okay, I see you little guy. You got all the speed. I'm real, real friendly. 
I mean, you know, in my life dating that, you know, I'm not, I'm not with the app thing. I'm on the apps, but it, I see somebody at the Starbucks that I want to talk to. I'm like, Hey, how you doing? You know what I mean? Like, Hey, can we get this coffee together? Let's sit down. Let's talk. I'm not shy one-on-one, but in that larger circle, I'm still feel like maybe I'm still affected by fifth grade and miseritis feeling like I may not be as smart as some other people. And, and, and it's still one of those things that are, is constricting me in certain areas. And I'm disappointed by that. And I'm hoping that someday I can overcome that fear and I'm working on it. So one of the things I'm doing right now is kind of talking about it in hopes that, you know, it's going to get better because I don't want to be that person. And like I said, I'm not always that dude. You know what I mean? Like if I'm at a party and there's a bunch of people I'm, I could go up and meet a bunch of strangers and um, and I could have a great time. I could walk into a room of 5,000 people. I could walk into a room of 5,000 people and make 4,999 friends. But at the same time, there's certain times when I feel conflicted and I don't know why. You know what I mean? Um, and if you feel this way, you know, tell me in the comments because... I'm still searching for answers right now, and I don't want to be a channel where I only focus on strengths. I want to work, focus on weaknesses too, because this is what I do. When I'm a trainer and somebody comes in and they say that they want to do a pull-up, I focus on being able to create an environment where they could do a pull-up by each level. I start with some with you know them pulling up on a Smith machine bar. Then I, I put a big, thick band on. Then I put a lesser band on and a lesser band. And then I see if they can do one by themselves. Then I see if they can do two. And then we start doing pull-ups. And I focused on a weakness and I created a strength. And right now, I'm, I'm trying to do that in some of the mental aspects of life. Because as you know, Usawa Fitness is balanced fitness, okay? Usawa is the Swahili word for balance and it's balanced fitness and that means being physically mentally and spiritually balanced and right now I'm taking time to give you guys a video where I talk about the mental and spiritual sides of things because I feel like I have a mental block and being not being a little bit afraid and I need my spirit to overcome that and you know the the, the strength part is, is just is just a visual so you know, it's bringing them all together. You feel me? So this is the first part of this kind of series I'm going to be doing. You said, like my cup. Let me know if y'all want Usawa Fitness cups. If you do, you could go to um, myusawafitness.com slash store and you can get your own cup like that or a shirt like this. <laughs> Gotta throw that out there, right? And don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you like what I'm talking about. But I'm going to be doing more videos like this. Today was just the first one. And let me know if you have any of the same fears in the comments. You know, share with me what you got going on. Let me know if you still trying to figure some things out in your life, even whether you be a young person or an old person. I'm 54 years old, and I'm still dealing with things that go back um, to when I was 10 years old, maybe younger. I don't know. I've never seen a therapist or anything like that. And I don't know where some of these fears come from, but I know that I want to overcome them, get bigger, get better, stronger, get better, you know. <laughs> but I want to just make sure that I am the person that I really see myself being by the time I get to the end of this life. So with that said, I appreciate y'all watching the video. If y'all want to see some more motivational video, check out that link right there. Now, until next time, stay blessed, stay motivated, and stay fit. Love and peace, everybody. Ow.